lace front wigs for LARP. For those of you who don't know what lace front wigs are, the difference between a lace front wig and a standard wig is that a lace front wig has individual hairs attached to a very fine mesh around the hairline so that you can create as natural a hairline as possible. These wigs are commonly used in film and TV and for when people just don't want to do their own hair and also don't want their hair to look fake, so this is why I use them for LARP. I have modified the traditional method for applying a lace front wig to suit the LARPer's unique need for very high durability. The last thing you want is to be acting out a dramatic scene and your hair comes off. And although I do make specific product recommendations in this video, I want to remind you that I have not been paid or comped any free samples for anything that I'm recommending. That is the beauty of being supported by the viewers on Patreon, is that I can afford to try out different products and see what works and present you with what works the best. The wig that I am using in this video comes from my very favorite commercial wig supplier, Arda Wigs. In preparation for this video alone, I have tried Epic Cosplay, Donna Love Hair, Uni Wigs, Wig is Fashion, and I even scored some wigs on Wish to see what worked and what didn't. And aside from the random wigs I got deals for on Wish, which gave me some really beautiful results as well as some I look like Captain Hook. <laughs> Not so beautiful uh, results. Everyone else was more or less consistent in their quality and price. What made Arda Wigs stand out to me is the fact that their wigs are really nice, they're high quality, and they're significantly cheaper than other suppliers. I don't know why this is true. I'm not going to question it until somebody tells me something horrible about them. Please don't. And their wigs actually fit over my deceptively large head and hair together. No other wigs have ever have ever done that. My head is it's 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 a lot bigger than it than it looks. It's my head is a TARDIS. So uh let's wig out. <laughs> The first thing you want to do with any lace front wig is to trim that lace. You never want to try on a wig with the lace untrimmed because it could rip all the way up the hairline. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut it off. And how I like to do mine is cut it all the way up to the hairline, like right up there as close as possible to where the hair starts. Um, if you cut off a couple of hairs because you get so close, that's fine. If you leave a little because you don't want to do that, that's also fine. The way I do my lace front wigs uh, allows for a little leeway when, when you're cutting it. So it should look, uh, should look pretty much like that. But you know, because of the way that this wig ended up looking, uh... and the fact that I wanted to use my Arda wig. Anyway, I just had already trimmed the lace we're gonna be using that wig from here on out. And how I get my hair under a wig cap is just to do some normal, you know, farm girl braids. And then I just tie them in the back like I'm beginning to tie a bow. Just like that. And then normally I pin them up, but you don't have to do that. I use two wig caps. The first one are these sort of like fishnet ones. Uh, this is really good for really long hair because it has the open back and you can just sort of wrap your hair up in it and clip it. Like so. And this next step is going to seem a bit strange, maybe, but just bear with me on this. I am using a washable, keyboard washable glue stick to smooth back my baby hairs and protect my hairline. The key word here is a washable glue stick. It creates a really nice thick barrier between your hair and any potential glue, because we're using Prose to stick the wig on, any potential glue that could get on your hair. And I'm told that not a lot of white people have baby hairs like I do, but um, whether you do or not, it's a really great way to smooth them back, protect them in a way that will be pretty easy to wash out later. And now it's time for wig cap number two. I have ridiculously thick hair, so I usually do use two wig caps. It just helps compress everything a little better. Uh, and this one is the more fine, more pantyhose-like sock sort of wig cap. And some people like to 
put their hair on the top of their head as well or a French braid all over. I have too much hair to add any mass to the top of my skull. It'll look real weird in a wig, so this is, this is how I do. And this next step is really if you have thick and curly hair or hair that's, you know, nice and floaty and fluffy in any way. This is just some normal pantyhose that I've cut the waist off and you can use the legs to wrap around and compress your hair even more. If you do it too tight, it definitely will give you a headache. So, you know, use with caution and uh, it, it's a good trick for really curly hair. I learned this as well from watching drag queen YouTube videos. Bless drag queens. And I'm finally getting to break out that Arda wig, which is a lace front wig in the style Lindsay in the color silver, which I love. And thank goodness because I am well aware that I look like the monster from the movie The Descent when I have a wig cap on and no makeup. So if you were thinking about making a comment like that, just think about that for a second. Arda wigs usually have hair clips on their wig caps, so for this first try on, I'm going to avoid accidentally clipping it to my head because I'm going to be altering the hairline of the wig a little bit so that I can avoid continuing to look like George Washington's horse. So because, as you can see, the hair at my temples is showing, even though the forehead is already forward about as much as it can be, it looks pretty short. So I'm going to be cutting out a little bit of the forehead so that I can drag the wig forward on my head a little bit more and hide the temples while not giving me a Tina Dunny short forehead. So what I'm doing here is I'm opening a new razor blade. Uh, be super careful with these. You can get them in like a hundred pack at hardware stores, but you know, careful. And I'm just going along the back of the wig where you can see there's just a little bit of lace. And just very carefully cutting about a centimeter at a time, about the width of a, a pinky nail just along the forehead and keeping as much hair in the temple area as possible. And that's just for me. You guys are going to want to alter the hairlines of your wigs to match your natural hairline as close as possible. Or, you know, if you want a widow's peak or whatever, you can do that in this step too. And here with this before and after, just from altering the hairline of the wig, you can already see that I look a whole lot less like a colonial stress dream. And once that's pretty well and good, I'm going to tie the wig with a hair tie and just go over my temples and sideburn area again with this glue stick because I am probably going to be getting glue in this hairline area, especially because I have a kind of a weird hairline and I don't want to, you know, shave it. This isn't the Italian Renaissance, so, yeah, no. And now we are ready for gluing. I have taken some thickened Prosade or Prosade cream, which I will have a link to in the description, just like always, and I've put it on the back end of a paintbrush so that I can just sort of use the back end of the paintbrush like a Q-tip and apply it that way, and just apply a little bit underneath the wig lace and pat it down. Now, Prosade tends to work best when you put the Prosade on both surfaces to be adhered, wait for it to get tacky, and then press them together. But since that's pretty difficult to do with a lace front wig like this, what you're going to want to do after you apply it like this to the entire hairline is to wait at least 20 minutes before you tug on it in any way. I have gotten out another paintbrush and I'm just using the back of that paintbrush just to pat it down so I don't get any glue on my fingers and so it just keeps it all a little bit tidier. Just makes it really easy to get in between the hairs and really just press where needed. Along the sideburns is definitely a tricky part for me because my sideburns tend to come in more towards my face so I have to be pretty careful about holding it in place while it dries so it doesn't drag back. Once that's dry enough that you can kind of tug on it, that it won't move out of place immediately, this is the part of the process where my method differs a little bit from most people's. I'm taking more of that thick and prosade, and it, it really does need to be the consistency of peanut butter. So whether you leave your prosade out to dry, whether you add cabasil, or whether you buy prosade cream just pre-thickened, keep that in mind. It really needs to be thick enough 
to be a paste like peanut butter. And I'm just using the back of that paintbrush again, applying it all along the hairline. And what I'm doing here is taking a little bit of makeup remover and putting it on my fingers so that my fingers don't stick. And I'm smoothing out that thickened prosade to really create a seamless blend between the ends of the hairline and my actual forehead. And really take that makeup remover and smooth it out and really make that a dissolved edge there. Which is the beauty of thickened prosade for things like this is it really does blend well into actual skin. This step for me really is what makes the difference as far as making a lace front wig work for a LARP because Prosade is a pretty strong medical grade adhesive so once it dries you have a really nice secure adhesion all around the hairline which is you know it's gonna see a lot of stress at a LARP so. And then once you let that dry for maybe 20 minutes or so at least long enough so that the Prosade is not sticky to the touch anymore I'm ready to put makeup over it to blend it. Uh, I use Dermacol, which I have talked about before on the LARP House tutorials. This is a foundation that is used for film and TV. It can cover up tattoos, it's waterproof, it's pretty hardcore. It is my go-to LARP foundation. If you don't want to do the rest of your makeup or put any foundation on like I am, the thing about thickened Prosade, if you just buy Prosade cream, it dries almost as clear as water, so you won't have to do all these steps. The Prosade that I use, I thickened myself and put a little bit of coloring in so it does not dry clear. And I am just blending the, the Prosade hairline in with my normal forehead by powdering and then just putting on layers of the, of the concealer until it, until it does what I want it to. It doesn't take a whole lot though. And then if you get the makeup on anything, like I have gotten in the wig hairs here, you can just use some 99% alcohol to take it out. Which, again, I'll have links to Dermacol, the alcohol, everything in the description of this video. And after a nice liberal powdering, we're done. We're done with the base layer. The next thing I'm going to be doing is taking my alcohol color palette, which is another thing I've talked about a lot on this show. It's basically like watercolor paints, but they're activated by 99% alcohol, they're waterproof, sweatproof, and they actually work a lot like watercolors as well to work with. But I'm taking a gray color and using that to blend the hairline into the wig even more. This is a step that I am doing because I have really light skin and the wig is also, you know, made up of really light hair. I'm doing this to create a bit of a divide between the skin and the hair so that I don't just look like a piece of frayed string cheese. And whether you are a person who likes to do your brows on the regular or not, I always recommend doing your brows to match your wig no matter what. And for light eyebrows especially, I am just using the exact same color I used to blend the hairline here, but I go in with the dark value of whatever the wig color is and then just go back over the hairs of your eyebrows with the lighter color. What that does is it lets you match your brows to your wig, but it also lets you keep the definition of your brow so that you don't look like a weird alien. Because the fastest way to make yourself look real weird real quick is to, you know, get rid of your eyebrows. And now I am using Mayron Paradise Paint in Silver, which is a water activated makeup. And I'm going to use it to add a little bit of a darker silver color into the wig to make it look a little bit more natural. And I'm starting near, you know, the sideburn area where hair is usually a little bit darker, um, just naturally on human people. And I'm just painting on the makeup, wetting my fingers, dragging my fingers through the hair to blend it. I'm also uh, going around in other places, not just the sideburn area, just to really give it some depth around my face. And I'm just using a wet cloth to blend it even more. Even if your hair is black, it will be slightly lighter brown, you know, in places where the sun touches it and a little bit darker on the back of your neck, near your ears, that sort of thing. So that is, that is what I am doing here. It really does help the wig look a little bit more natural and less stark and helps it blend better. And now for the all important last step in blending a lace front wig to a normal human body is going to be creating the baby hairs. What I'm doing is taking a razor blade and just sort of scooting it lightly along the hairs near the face to create some, some, of, those, some of those little baby hairs. 
you know, just take the razor blade and scoot, scoot, scoot. <laughs> Uh, even if you don't have a lot of baby hairs naturally, uh, it's it always looks a little bit better on a lace front wig to create some. It really helps give that final touch that makes people sort of double take and really question whether or not you actually have this crazy hair color that you've created. <laughs> and I just really want to emphasize that I would not know half of these lace front wig tricks that work so beautifully if it weren't for the people of color and the drag queens that were on YouTube sharing their secrets. So I'm going to link to the videos where I learned some of these things in the description if you want to know more about lace front wigs and such. Uh, but seriously, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, you may have noticed an outfit change and the fact that I have finished my face makeup. I'm still just adding baby hairs as far as the wig goes. I just got really excited about the character that this wig is for, which you'll find out more about at the end of this video. But after really getting in and doing a bunch of those teeny tiny little hairs, you know, near the face and especially near the part of your hair, I'm going back in with that glue stick and I'm sort of using it a little bit like a hair gel at this point to really lay down those tiny hairs and, and make them wispy around the hairline like they are naturally. And after a little bit of noodling with the baby hairs, once you're happy with these and the general blend of the wig, you're pretty much done. And this process will allow a wig to stay on your head for multiple days. And the cool thing about using Prosate is that it is activated by alcohol. So if it does start to peel up a little bit, you can just clean both surfaces with some alcohol and press it right back down and it'll stay. So once you're happy here, you're ready to go. Ta-da! That is a thing you know now. Congratulations. Here are some other things you should know. One is that Mama O'Brien and I have gotten our characters assigned to us for our crazy pirate LARP adventure with Joe Buck Studios in Skull and Crossbones, the game that takes place on three pirate ships in the Baltic Sea. <laughs> you will absolutely want to check out Momo's new video all about the LARP and our characters and how much of really fun it's going to be. <laughs> she has requested help from her viewers in naming her character because they only assign us the first letter of our first name so that we can have that freedom. And uh, I want to ask you guys for help naming mine too. I have the first initial T and the last name Sawyer. This character is very much like Tulio from The Road to El Dorado. Very snarky, very cunning, very exasperated all the time. So yeah, you know, help a sister out. She is also the ship's poet, and for reasons that will be released soon, she often uses sign language to communicate, which I am really excited about. Next is something that I have been dreaming about since I became a human person, meaning since uh, I started reading Harry Potter books. Uh, I'm going to the Yule Ball. It is the College of Wizardry Winter Banquet event this December. I'm so excited. So some wonderful, beautiful angels at Joe Buck Studios saw me virtually screaming uh, about the Winter Banquet event over the internet. And they invited me to go. I'm, I'm going to Winter Wizard School. And it just so happens that the wig that I used in this episode is the wig that I'm going to use for the character that I'm building for that event. She is going to be a half Vila character, kind of like Fleur de la Cour was in the Harry Potter books. And I'm going with the more traditional Slavic V I L A Vila folklore here, which is essentially enchanting, beautiful siren lady who does not mess around. She's gonna basically be a Slytherin Queen Bee type debutante person. I'm really excited because I've very much not played anything like that before. And I need help designing and making her outfits and her ball gown, you guys. So if you know any artists or seamstresses that would want to work with me, that would be absolutely incredible because sewing hurts me deep in the cavernous depths of my soul. Like, I just don't like it, okay? I just... So I want to take that opportunity to give other artists a spotlight while keeping me far, far away from sewing machines. Hit me up, please, please. Her colors are blue, gray, silver, and black, and I'm so excited to come up with 
with a winter ball gown. This is my dream. dream. <laughs> Forget marriage. It's going to College of Wizardry and then going to the Yule Ball within College of Wizardry. That's... That's my dream. And the last thing that you should take away from this episode is the featured LARPer, and that LARPer is Lizelle over at Lizelle Made on Etsy. Oh, I hope I put it here. That's gonna be embarrassing if I know. Lizelle is an extremely talented crafter who makes a great deal of the personal props that players use in College of Wizardry. She makes wands, pens, lanterns, badges. It's all there. She is a College of Wizardry veteran and she is going to actually be playing the headmaster at College of Wizardry 14 and I'm going to try really hard to NPC that event because I need to be there for that glorious occasion. Lizelle is amazing and beautiful and perfect and she's really sweet and she was really nice to me and she helped me navigate the public transportation system in Denmark and even though it's actually not Denmark I'm very easily confused and lost and so that would have meant a great deal to me and so thank you Lizelle for being a fluorescent light bulb of goodness and talent in the LARP community. Go check her out you guys. <laughs> But that truly does wrap it up for this episode, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We love you, we cherish you, and if you have any questions, comments, or emotional helpers, please feel free to message us. We are on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and Instagram, and the email for business inquiries is going to be in the description of this video. It is lighthouse at iCloud.com. And because this is probably the last intro and outro, I will be filming in California in this house. Uh, thank you so much for all you have done for us, and thank you for liking us, subscribing to us, and fighting with us. She has asked you guys for, asked, she has asked you,